let's talk a little bit about metastatic colon cancer, unresectable sort of frontline approaches. And Tony, I'm going to pick on, on you first as to, you know, out there in the, in the heartland of the nation. So what, what um, how do you think about the choices, the menu that's out there uh, when making a treatment recommendation uh, to a patient? Uh, so, you know, the, the, the menu has become larger and larger, not necessarily better and better. It's good as it is, and we certainly uh, continue to try to improve upon it. But the, 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 the first question is, of course, what backbone, what chemotherapy backbone? And, you know, uh, for the longest time, we've understood that we have two chemotherapy backbones that are very similar. They're not the same, Fulfiri and Fulfox. And they both seem to be a reasonable first approach. Then the next question is, uh, uh, do biologics improve the effectiveness of chemotherapy? And the answer is mostly yes, uh, and clearly for most. Um, there are two Again, two, uh, two options on the menu, VEGF, EGFR inhibitors. VEGF inhibitors, at least in the first line, bevacizumab, EGFR, we have two, uh, penetumumab and cetuximab. Uh, and, and then we have these, as, as, as we, we started the discussion earlier, uh, breaking down the disease from the get-go into the RAS mutated and the RAS wild type. And then you have the RAS wild type, BRF wild type. And what do you do with these different uh, patients? The RAS wild type, of course, you have BRF wild type, rash wild type, you have uh, the option of starting with a VEGF plus chemo, VEGF inhibitor plus chemo, or an EGFR inhibitor plus chemo. The rash uh, wild type, BRF mutated, little different group, they behave very aggressively, they have very poor prognosis. This is uh, a, a patient population that may benefit actually from a triplet chemotherapy regimen plus minus bevacizumab. Let, let me jump in. Do you yeah. know this when you're making the frontline decision at your yes. shop always? Yes. Or you won't make it until you know? Uh, well, we try to essentially uh, uh, have this available at the first discussion whenever possible. So for most patients, it is it's automatically done by our pathology department. Yeah. I'll now. let you finish. But others, do you often know or you don't know? I think that's the problem is that a lot of referrals from outside, we don't know. So you have a patient who comes in with stage four disease, I don't know the RAS status, I don't know where the specimen is, and they want to get started right away. And they so, want to start today. Yeah, today. So <laughs> I think that's a luxury that we don't have sometimes. So in those patients, not knowing the RAS status, I would probably use anti-VEGF drug plus some chemo backbone versus EGFR drug. But having knowing that data will be very beneficial for us to make that decision. For example, if the patient was BRAF mutant, I agree, I would use triplet regimen. But and is there, is there enough evidence that says if you knew RAS wild type that EGFRs are better in front line or not? Or is it, do, should you wait? Or does it matter, Johanna? There's definitely controversy there, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we have two large studies, the FIRE3 study and the CLGB80405, both of which tried to dis determine whether you should use a VEGF inhibitor or an EGFR inhibitor. Data is still totally up in the air. CLGB says no. FIRE3 says yes. Is there a specific population of patients that may benefit from an EGFR inhibitor in the first line therapy? Probably yes, mm. but I don't know that we definitely know who those folks are yet. But I think with some of the studies that we have that are coming and retrospective analyses in the studies that we've had, we're going to start to define some of these smaller patient populations. So do you know most of the time when you're making that frontline decision? Or do you? Is Probably it, about 50-50. Yeah. And what I've been coaching folks on is saying, OK, well, if you don't know it, but the patient wants treatment today, First of all, clinical trial, mm. best way to go. You don't have a clinical trial, go ahead and start them on chemotherapy, but make sure that when you get that result back, it cues you in to think, oh yeah, maybe I need to change up therapy if I see certain things. Yeah. Do you know or don't know? Well, I just say, I, not that I would ever take issue with something Johanna would say, but oh, I would, wow. but I would on this, in <laughs> only because the idea of two large studies, right? I mean, they are, there are two studies, FIRE3 and 80405, FIRE-3 is of modest size. It was empowered to look at survival. It's supposed to look at response rate. There's no difference in response rate between the regimens, cetuximab and, uh, and, and bevacizumab. 80405 is a large, well-powered study which shows no difference between those two antibodies. And as far as I'm concerned today, there is no presumed difference between these antibodies, and so I would routinely start with bevacizumab. Why? Because I don't always get the RAS status the day I see them, and at least the, the data tells us there's probably not a difference in RAS wild type patients. So this is an international audience, actually, that watches this. Um, and, you know, we do have this European, North America fight going on right now about this. 
that they see this tail separation and the like. So I think, you know, how one interprets this, but I think sometimes we know, sometimes we don't. I think part of the message here is that it's controversial and you don't have to know. Is that everybody okay with that? That you have a decent frontline option even if you don't know any molecular testing. But if you don't know, don't use an EGFR inhibitor. That's the important yeah. message. You, you <laughs> can't just try it and yeah. see because of maybe harm, toxicity, yeah. all of that stuff. So, and extended RAS testing. So Tony, I interrupted. Oh. So how do you decide let me just get yeah. to ox versus Erie. I yeah. mean, there are a lot of people who say, I'm an ox uh -huh, guy, uh -huh. and I'm an Erie gal, and how do you decide? I do have my biases, yeah. uh, certainly. But I, I personally think that they're relatively similar, and ultimately, with a lot of options down the line, uh, you know, this washes out survival in some ways. But my preference has always been to start with Irene Otikin in the first line, Fulfiri. And for a, lot of, for a lot of reasons, although sometimes we're limited by the choice because of clinical trials, uh, but the, the reasons are not that I think there is superiority of one versus the other. Uh, however, I find it actually easier to give and give for prolonged periods of time and get easier to restart uh, when needed. You know, the lingering neurotoxicity can be quite problematic. In parts of the country, of course, there's the concerns uh, about uh, alopecia. Uh, certainly in the I have that concern. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the point of the matter is that it, 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 for, for the Irene Otikan data has actually more consistent uh, positive data with biologics than oxaliplatin based regimens. What so are they so going to get in Boston? Out. They're going to get either one. Yeah. So um, I, I'd say our group is probably evenly split between mm. Folfox and Fulfiri, and I probably would say my practice is relatively split because, as Tony alluded to, there are patients who object to the alopecia and there are patients who object to, object to neuropathy, and you, you know, because they're relatively equivalent, uh, you try to listen. Richard? Well, I think um, I would, you know, like at our place, we use mostly oxaliplatin-based regimen, not because I think that's better than irantecan, but a lot of second-line trials currently going on in the U.S. are irantecan-based. Mm -hmm. So if you use irantecan up front, then you don't give the patient an opportunity to go on second-line trial. That's probably the, one of the main reasons why I would mostly use full FOX-based regimen up front. It's a terrible reason, right. but it's the same one I use, is mm -hmm. that all our study, second-line studies, uh, you burn them as soon as you right. start or in a TCAN yep. first line. But if you're seeing a surgeon, yeah. uh, which yeah. I'm sure you've done, mm -hmm. I've done, and they say, I don't want oxaliplatin, you give oh, them yeah. a TCAN. Oh, yeah, no question. No mm -hmm. question. It's, it's a choice. So we have...